Hey up everybody, uh, I'm over on my my for them old seven lathe today and I'm just going to do a little job for a friend and I thought I'd show, show this, uh, it might help any beginners out there that's setting off in this um, wonderful hobby that we do. Um, I know all you season machinists and turners are going to know all this and it's really basically for any beginners that sometimes you just have to think outside the box when you're using all your equipment on your lathe. Just a bit about my lathe then, it's got a serial number that says it's one of the last ML7s that were made. The actual last one was made in 1979 and this is approaching that, that date with serial number. It's an ML7, it's got a tri-lever headstock which means, which means you don't have to mess around changing pulleys uh, and you can change the speed in mid flow and it doesn't affect anything so uh, that's that's a, that's a real I mean some people don't like them but you know I can't fault it to be honest I think it's it depends if you've got them set up correctly uh, on, on the various pulley systems inside the actual tri-lever headstock I think if they're set up correctly they're a marvellous bit of kit well mine is anyway and it, it's got a quick change uh, gearbox on it for screw cutting and it's in really nice condition I've had it for 15 years and I bought it from a dentist this chap he had it in his shed or garage hardly ever used it were all oiled up and everything except for one little bit on the saddle nothing to do with the workings of the lathe the rust accumulated on this bit of the saddle here and it's just made a bit of a mark on the saddle uh, other than that it's it's a really nice lathe anyway I'm digressing aren't I here so the lathe's got a three and a half inch swing over the bed all, all ML7's a little bit same so that means you can get a seven inch diameter job in it and the job I'm going to tattle today is on, on the limit of this lathe, it's up to its capacity I've probably got less than a sixteenth to play with over the bed but not just that, it's a very very awkward component to hold conventionally in any chuck or face plate on the ML7, I'll add to that now I could go and make a fixture but it's only a one-off so I'm not going to be bothering with that because it's going to take me ten times longer to make a fixture than it is to do the actual actual job so um, right the job then it's a it's a brake hub off of off a wheel of a motorcycle it's a custom chopper that my friend made from scratch using an Uncle Bunt frame. Now Uncle Bunt frame don't mean nothing to me even though I've got motorcycles but apparently it's a sought after chopper frame for, for making customised choppers. Right so I'll not waffle on then, I'll, uh, I'll get over to the workbench and explain to you what I'm doing and like I said for any seasoned machinist you know, you, you're going to know all this. It's just really for any novices that's uh, setting up or just starting in lathe work or machining work. So on a, on a Myford lathe you've probably got standard equipment such as a face, a face plate, a four jaw and a three jaw. Well here's the job I'm going to attempt to do. It's, um, I'll tell you where it is. It's 6 and 15 16 so it's just clearing the bed when it's in chalk. So uh, yeah, what it is, this back plate's damaged. So he's acquired another back plate of the same design, but it wants boring out in the centre to take this axle. So I've got to I've got to bore this out to that size. Now the thing is, when you look at the back plate at the back, it's very, very difficult and very, and very flimsy as well. It's not very, it's not very substantial. There's just nowhere to grip on in a, in a conventional choke. If you put it in your forge, the actual spigot is tapered 
downwards. So if you put your forger on there, every time you try to adjust it, it's just sliding up the jaws. Uh, no doubt if you put some packers in and, and gripped it very, very carefully and took minuscule cuts, you might get away with it, but it's got a tendency to want to come out the chuck the more you tighten it. Well that's how I was going to do it, I was going to hold it on that spigot there. So I've, I've aborted that because if I damage it, it's took him ages to find one of these. Uh, I don't want it to come out at chuck on me and, and do any damage to it. So I can't use my forger conventionally. My, my face plate is just not big enough to put to put any clamping mechanism on to bore it out. So that's going to be out. And my three jaw, although it, I can grip it on, on the back side here because this piece is parallel, this boss, it's just not true to the bore. It's just a casting. But it is parallel, so I can grip it on that. It does go into the three jaw that way, but I can't set it up. So I'll move over to Myford and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right, so I've put my four jaw onto, onto headstock. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grip the back of this parallel portion into my three jaw. Then I'm going to put the three jaw into the four jaw so I've got scope to set it up. Now it's not an ideal way of doing things this and I know really I probably ought to have made a fixture but you know it's just gonna, it's just a one off this uh, I'm, I'm never never going to do another one so I'm going to set my four jaw up roughly put this in and then set this up before I tighten my, my jaws up on my three jaw I'm just going to put some packers underneath jaws just to stop marking choke I'm not going to get it spot on because once I put this back plate in it's going to be running out anyway so I've got to adjust it again. So this boss in the centre on the back is parallel. It's not concentric to the bore but it is parallel to give me a good place to grip on. Uh, my three jaw is going to come inside all these bits that's cast onto it. So it's not going to foul on them. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to set the bar up with my clock. I'm going to set this face up and check this face, because that's on the only two pieces that's been machined. I've got my DTI, DTI pointer set so far up the bore and uh, you just got to determine which way you, you, your needle's moving so you know which way to move the jaw so if I just touch on the pressing that way the point is coming this way the needle's turning anti-clockwise uh, sorry clockwise so when I've got my when the job rotates the and I'm the furthest over this way clockwise that means this side is touching the pointer more than the other side so I've got to loosen this jaw and tighten this one up and so on until I get it running true
Right, don't get too hung up, up about it first off because we've got to check this face here and this face. Because obviously that might be running true, but it might be um, not running true on the face. So the front of the bore will be out to the back of the bore. So we've got to get it running true on face as well as on bore. Right, I'm going to go back to jaws now and get this one running true. Right, with a little bit of perseverance and a bit of jiggery pokery, I've managed to get the bore within half a thou. Uh, bear this in mind: the bore itself is rough with wear from what we pre what the previous shafts done on it, so it's making the clock jiddle around a little bit. But I've got it to half a thou in the bore, and I've got this front face. within a thou. It's just got a little kink in it there because there's a little um, roughness on the face there. Yeah. So I've got the face within half a thou, I've got the bow within half a thou. So you can see the casting's running way out as is this casting on the face but the face of this plate here is running roughly the same as that face the bore's running true so I'm going to get my boring bar sorted out now and bore that out to size my boring bar set up and I've just measured the shaft up that the, 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 the bore's got to run on and uh, it's measuring point seven four zero eight thousandths plus or minus half a thou in various places so I'm going to bore it bore the job out the the cover to point seven four one zero that's giving me um, two tenths of a thou above the size of the shaft then I'll try it and if it, if it just needs a little bit more I'll uh, I'll take another couple of tenths of a thou off. Right so I'm approaching size within 15 thou I suppose roughly and because I've got a very small diameter boring bar in I'm just going to start take a few spring cuts because uh, the, the small diameter will always slightly deflect slightly so if you get all your spring cuts out then you know exactly what size you're on then you can take your final cuts so that's without putting any cut on the cross slide you can see it's taking a, a few thousandths off that's because the boring bar has de been deflecting slightly as I've been machining the bulk of the material out so that first spring cut took around an extra fourth hour out so I'm going to take another couple of spring cuts Right, so I've took a number of spring cuts and uh, I've got, to, uh, what have I got, three and a half thou to come off now. So that's where I am at the moment and that's where I've got to be. That's it then, job completed. That's another custom motorcycle kept on road thanks to me, Myford. Uh, I'll get that off down to my friend now and he'll have that fitted probably in no time. So if you found that interesting, 
give me a subscribe and a thumbs up and I'll catch you on my next uh, project wherever that, that may be uh, so I'll sign off for now then thanks for watching bye for now